Turn to Proverbs 9 and verse 11. I'm going to cover a couple of verses tonight, Lord willing, 11 and 12. And this will take us through the portion where wisdom is speaking and calling unto men to come into her house. This will sum up her message in these two verses. And then we'll get into the foolish woman's message next week, Lord willing. And there will be some interesting things to, to take a look at when we get there. So Proverbs 9.11 says, For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. So the me, of course, in this verse is wisdom. Verse 1, wisdom hath built her house, and she hath hewn out, her, hewn out her seven pillars, and then she sends out her maidens, which are her ministers, to call men to come into her church, to into her house. And she says here that by her our days will be multiplied in the years of our lives our lives will be increased. So this tells us that possessing and then using wisdom, because to possess it doesn't do you any good if you don't use it, but possessing and using wisdom will increase the length of one's life. And there are numerous verses in the Bible that talk about this. We've already been over some of them in the Proverbs, which I'll make mention of here in just a second. But we're taught in Proverbs that remembering and keeping the Word of God, which is where wisdom comes from, does bring long life. In Proverbs 2 and verse 6, I will remind you, this is where wisdom comes from. It comes from the word of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. So the Lord's words, his mouth, that's the word of God. That's where wisdom comes from. And that wisdom brings long life. And I'll explain how that works in a second, but I want to show you that it works first. Proverbs 3 and verse 2. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. The they there is Solomon's law, Solomon's commandments that he's giving to his son, which as we've seen before are God's law and God's commandments to his son since Solomon was writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And then Proverbs 4 and verse 10. It says, Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. So if we hear wisdom's words, receive her sayings, they will add length of days, long life unto us, and add years to our life. Now there are two ways in which this is done. Um, there's one that I would call the direct and the indirect. So the direct is that when God is pleased with those who get and exercise wisdom, he lengthens their days because it is he who determines the length of their days. This, is, this would be direct. Uh, Proverb, uh, Job, pardon me, Job 14 and verse 5. I think we sometimes forget that it's the Lord that determines the length of our days because I think all, uh, probably almost all people get caught up in I get sick, I'm going to go to the doctor because I don't want to die. Well, who exactly is controlling the length of your life here? You, the doctor, or God? You know, I think most people think it's them and the doctor. Um, God says it's him, so I'm going to, I'm going to go with him on that one. Uh, Job 14 and verse 5. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. The he there is referring to man. Right, verse 1, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. And Solomon's, or Job is talking about man and his frailty and his, you know, the fact that he's like a vapor, that he's not here for very long. And verse 5 again says, seeing his days are determined. To determine means to set bounds or limits upon. That's what it means to determine. So his days have bounds and limits put upon them. The number of his months are with thee, that's with God. Thou hast appointed his bounds. See that kind of right there, built-in dictionary. Determine means bounds, to put bounds on. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So man is not going to live longer than God wants him to live. Doesn't matter how many supplements you take. Doesn't matter how many antibiotics you take. Doesn't matter how many doctors you go to. Doesn't, you are not going to live longer than God wants you to. That's not to say that taking care of yourself won't prolong your life and will take you up to the end point that God has set, right? I, this is the way that I see it. God has set an end point. You're, not, you're never going to go beyond that end point, but you can check out early 
due to stupidity, due to you know bad living, due to you know drug use or whatever, all kinds of stuff. You can you can end it early or just flat out suicide. Of course, God still has to allow any of that to happen, right? He's, if He really doesn't want you to die, you're not going to die even if you try to shoot yourself. But. So God will extend the life of people that seek and exercise wisdom because he wants to bless them with long life because that's his prerogative. He will honor those who call upon him with long life, we're told in Psalm 91 and verse 16. Psalm 91 and verse 16. It says, With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is to the man that trusts in the Lord. This is what that whole song is. Psalm. I guess I could say song, because psalms are songs. But um, That's what you call misspeaking and then making excuses for it, making it sound like you really didn't. But, um, but anyway, this, is, this psalm is for to encourage us to trust in the Lord and his provision. And the man that does that, the Lord will, will satisfy him with long life. But there's also a second way that God lengthens our days through wisdom, and that is, I would call, the indirect method. That is, when we live wisely, then we will get long life due to good decision-making, which results in good health. And so this is kind of the other, the other side of the coin that I was just talking about. The one side of the coin is God determines the length of your life, and God can extend it up to the point that he wants. The other side of the coin is you, either through good living or foolish living, can shorten it up or lengthen it, you know, to get to that end point. One of the two. So this would be a fringe benefit of getting wisdom. That is, making good decisions in life, which then will bless you with good health, which will extend your days. And I'll show you how this works. So it begins with fearing the Lord, which then gives you wisdom, which then teaches you to depart from evil, which then facilitates good health and leads to long life. So let me just give you a string of verses here. First of all, we have Proverbs 9 and verse 10, which we just went over here the last time or the time before, which says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So you have the fear of the Lord, as we looked at here a week or two ago, which gives you wisdom. And the fear of the Lord is wisdom. Remember um, Job 28, 28? He said that the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So the fear of the Lord is both the beginning of wisdom and is wisdom itself. Because it, it's wise to fear God, and when you do so, it will give you more wisdom. So it is wisdom, and it's the beginning of wisdom, both. It gets you started on the path, and it is wise to fear God after that. So then, fearing God and having wisdom will teach you to depart from evil. Proverbs 3 and verse 7. Proverbs 3 and verse 7. It says, Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. So, if you fear the Lord, that means you have wisdom. That means you're going to be smart enough to depart from evil. You're going to see, well, this would be a, an evil path to take. This is a good path to take. I'm going to pick the good path. And I'm going to pick wise decisions which are going to make my life better. And that will facilitate good health. The next verse, Proverbs 3 and verse 8. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. It, fearing God and departing from evil, that will cause you to have, to have good health. I'll give you some examples of that. Examples of departing from evil due to the fear of God would include... Ceasing to fornicate. That's evil. Right? If you do that, you're going to have bad health. You're going to contract STDs. Not only that, you're going to have children out of wedlock. That's going to, or you're going to break up your marriage. And then that's going to ruin you financially because people that have kids before they get married or people that get divorced and all that, their lives are a wreck, their finances are a wreck, everything is all screwed up. And people that are in poverty have bad health. That's just a fact. People that are in lower incomes typically have worse health outcomes. Drinking excessively, okay, that's a sin. Drunkenness is a sin. That's a no-brainer, right? Kills your liver. If, if it's bad enough, you can't, keep, can't hold down a job. I mean, there's all kinds of things that are going to uh, adversely affect your health there. Or overeating. That's called gluttony. That's also a sin, right? If you have wisdom, you'll know enough to depart from evil. You won't eat too much. And if you eat too much, you get fat, you get heart disease, you get 
diabetes, you get any, any number of things. Um, you get COVID and, and die from it because a lot of the people that die from COVID are overweight. Seriously, that's, that's one, of the, one of the factors that causes people to die from COVID when you're overweight, diabetes, things like that. Uh, and then associating with dangerous people and doing dangerous things. Um, that will have a shortening effect on your life as well, right? Uh, that's why Solomon taught his son in the, very, in the very first chapter, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood and lurk out the, uh, let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause and so on. He tells them, you don't go with those people. You start hanging out with people like that and your life is going to be shortened. You're going to be one of those statistics in Chicago, which are one of the people that get killed in the gang violence and the shootings and all that kind of stuff. But then wisdom also teaches us to have discretion and prudence when it comes to the consumption or practice of lawful things, but lawful things that are not expedient things. Because the Bible talks about that. I'll just give you, a, I'll give you the verse here. In, I think it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And this is where... This is, this is where a mature Christian gets distinguished from an immature Christian. Because an immature Christian will, if he sees a thou shalt not, he probably has enough sense to not do that. A mature Christian may see something where he says, well, technically I can do that. Technically that's not a sin. But he has enough sense to realize, though it's not actually a sin, it's not a good idea. It's not wise. And... Therefore, it could be lawful, but it's not expedient. That is in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 23. It says, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Now, of course, when he says all things are lawful for me, he means all lawful things are lawful for me. He doesn't mean all sinful things are lawful for me. <laughs> Obviously, those are not lawful by definition. But all things that God's law allows are lawful, but they're not all expedient. Right? God's law allows you to eat a Big Mac. To eat one once in a while is okay, but to have a steady diet of Big Macs would be absolutely insane. I mean, you literally would kill yourself. Even though you, you might not be a glutton because you might not eat too much, but you would kill yourself. You would die, right? Go watch that um, Super Size Me thing, uh, documentary. So there are things that are lawful but are not expedient. And wisdom teaches us to stay away from the things that are inexpedient, such as smoking cigarettes. Smoking cigarettes is lawful, as long as you're not addicted to it. Paul says he will not be brought under the power of any. So we're not supposed to be addicted to anything. So if you're addicted to cigarettes, that's a problem. But to, to smoke occasionally, or you know, to, to you know, maybe if you had, if you could, if you were in a case where you weren't addicted to it, and you could have a pack of cigarettes, and then you could just go in a week or a month and not have any. So you're not addicted to it. You're not under the power of it. Maybe you just like it. It still wouldn't be wise to be smoking a lot. Maybe a cigarette once in a while is not going to hurt you. But to be smoking a lot is, is not wise. It may be lawful, but it's not a good idea. Eating junk food, like I said, Big Macs, things like that. Not getting enough sleep. Right? It's not a sin to go to bed an hour too late or get up an hour too early. Right? It's not a sin, but it's not wise. I can give you a verse for that. Um, Psalm 127. Psalm 127. And like I say, this is where mature Christians deviate from immature Christians. An immature Christian says, if it ain't a sin, I'm not worried about it. A mature Christian says, yeah, but it's not wise. So I'm not going to do things that aren't wise that are going to harm the quality of my life. Uh, Psalm 127 and uh, verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. It doesn't say it's a sin to rise up early and sit up late. It says it's vain. It's not a good idea. It's foolish. It's a waste of your time and your life to do that. But it's not necessarily a sin. Or not getting enough exercise. Right? Bodily exercise profiteth a little, we're told. Um, but it, it does profit a little. And, you know, I do. That's why I walk a half an hour, six days a week, to try to get some exercise. I don't get much, but... It's something. Some people say that's a pretty good form of exercise anyway. But, you know, for somebody to say, the Bible never commands me to get any exercise, therefore I'm never going to get any exercise. I'm going to sit down as many hours a day as I possibly can. Well, you're not sinning by doing that, but you're an idiot. 
right? I mean, just because you're not sinning doesn't, you know, I mean, it's not a good thing to be an idiot. That could lead to other sins, though. It so could. You're sharing, you don't do anything. You just well, eat. You're going to get fat. No, that's true. It lead to things. When, if, I mean, if you were sitting in a chair all day and never working or never doing anything, then, of course, yeah, that's going to lead to other things. Yes. Okay, so those are just some examples that wisdom teaches us not only to depart from evil and from sin, but also from inexpedient things. So if a man through wisdom ceases to do such foolish or unwise things, his health will be improved and his life will be lengthened. Now, on the contrary, whereas the fear of the Lord prolongs one's days, wickedness will shorten them for the exact same reasons. When you're wicked, God says, you know what, I've had enough of you, and he zaps you. Ananias and Sapphira, Nadab and Abihu, Uzzah, um, Onan, right? all kinds of examples in the Bible where God just, you know what, you're going to be evil. Ur says that Ur was evil, he was evil before the Lord, and the Lord killed him. We don't even know what he did, but the Lord had enough of him. So you can have, it can have a direct impact on your life or an indirect, right? If If you do a lot of the things that we just talked about here, well, they'll indirectly affect the length of your days. Proverbs 10 and verse 27. It says, The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. There's a verse in Psalms. don't remember the exact reference. It says that um, bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. The Lord cuts them off early. If he right. doesn't keep him around to punish us like Trump. Yes, Fauci and some of the other ones. Right. Yes, I know. I sometimes, well, we don't know why God does what he does. So he's got reasons for it. Yeah, I, Fauci's one guy I wish would not have lived out <coughs> half his days, but <clears throat> unfortunately he has. So getting wisdom by reading and meditating in the scriptures will invite God's blessing into our lives and will prevent the natural consequences of sin from shortening them. So that would basically be a synopsis of this verse. And that takes care of verse 11. Just a quick note at the end of the sermon. The most important thing a believer in Jesus Christ can do is to be a member of one of God's true churches. If you're not already a member of one, Go to pastorwagner.com slash churches to see if there is a true church or other...